Thank you for listening to this edition of the Christian Car Guy podcast. It's brought to you by Mr. Quick Pick Lock and Road. Mr. Quick Pick is the opportunity for you to start your own roadside assistance business. If you have more investment energy than investment capital, stop working for someone else. Mr. Quick Pick Lock and Road is the opportunity to have your own home-based business, working directly with auto clubs and leveraging a national brand and marketing strategy. Mr. Quick Pick helps people who have run out of gas, lock their keys in their car, or need a jump start. An A-plus rated company with the Better Business Bureau and the three-time winner of the Member's Choice Award for customer service. This could be the chance you've been looking for to serve others at the point of crisis and even share your walk with Christ. So whether you're looking for a business opportunity or in need of emergency roadside assistance, choose Mr. Quick Pick Lock and Road, mrquickpick.com. Now sit back and enjoy this podcast of the Christian Car Guy Radio Show. Christian Car Guy Radio Show. I say this calls for action, and now, nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud. Negotiations Bible style. Bible style. Bible, 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 Bible. Negotiation Bible style. See the USA in your Chevrolet. America is asking you to call. Here come the Dutch boys. Those good guys are back. With a look in their eye. They mean business this time. Yes, you may have guessed it today on the Christian Car Guy Show. Car odor elimination ideas. Yes, we have Bill Mixon since we're with us today our christian insurance guy so car odor elimination ideas today's show has the possibility of being a real stinker right bill <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh he had to get me another car and i can't buy a new one and the slightly old one had a smell i had to deal with so when it comes to car odors you might want to cry over spilled milk. <laughs> After three days in the back seat, those fish are like relatives. <laughs> and my mother always used to say that, really. But if you <laughs> bought a car from someone that smoked in, you really have those issues. And we have some ideas for you, but we would love for you to call in with your... Tr- I have discovered this week <laughs> more stuff that you can do for a smell in a car than I ever could believe possible. But I would love to know what's your idea. What's the tried and true odor eater in your life? 866-348-7884. Yes, 866-348-7884. Call in and share what you would use to get rid of these Odors like Bill is, you know, car had a little bit of smoke in it. Kim, you got something for us too? I saw you. Uh, well, I just thought about a situation where my son left a piece of chicken underneath my seat that I didn't know about. <laughs> and probably it had probably been in about a week. And, you know, it started reeking. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then there's the Linville che- uh, Lindberger cheese on the intake manifold trick if you've never tried <laughs> Ooh, that sounds like, I tell you, that sounds like a college prank. <laughs> <laughs> well, the calls are already coming in, so that's good. 866-348-7884. We're also going to share on the show today how to find a good mechanic. How do you do that? What is your strategy for finding a good mechanic? And then with our Jesus Labor Love Ministry here at the Christian Car Guys Show, we have been helping single moms, widows, and families in crisis for years. And God made my heart aware of this how i should say i got made of how god feels about widows and orphans and those kind of things not long after i started doing the show because i noticed that all my email was from widows and single moms and stuff that didn't have somebody in their life to help them out with a car so we love to highlight resources for widows and orphans and those kind of things when we come across them and this week i came across a wonderful lady and a wonderful book um, Kim Knight wrote the book, The Widow's Might, 
and it's a little different. It's not M I T E might or, <laughs> but it's M I G H T. And Kim is a widow, and she has some resources along these lines today. Welcome, Kim. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you today, Robbie. And I am so excited to be here on Car Odor Elimination Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> we need some female help with the, you know those kind of things, but uh, <clears throat> nonetheless. You yourself are a widow, and you have some really great stuff to share for our widows today on the show, right? Thank you. I hope I do. It's been a it's been a journey for me, and it's been a journey for everybody that's been down this road, and uh, hopefully have some wisdom to share today. Yeah, I know you do, and, and I, you're going to love her, to hear her story and, and what God is doing through her ministry. And, of course, coming up at the end of the show in our appraisal by the Real Black Book, that's where we search the Bible for hidden treasure, crowd for discernment, lift up our voice for understanding. Well, if you stop and really consider the curses that happened in Genesis 3, you know, the ones that God cursed Adam and Satan and Eve, when you think about those, those who are not in Christ will be consumed by the dust devil. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the question that I want to consider in our last segment today is, is there a connection when you think of the what Satan and Adam and Eve actually did? Was there a connection from the curse to what their motive was at the point in time when they actually sinned? And the example being that when you think about Satan, right, he ended up as low as he could be, was it possible his motive was to be exalted above God and God put him down low? So is there a connection between what the motive of Eve was or what the motive of Adam was and the curse? And if so, you know, what might be those added antidotes? And we're going to talk about that coming up in the last segment today in our appraisal by the Real Black Book. And of course, as always, we want to mention we have <laughs> our website resource, thechristiancarguy.com. There you can see how to order Kim's book, The Widow's Might, but also you know, odor elimination ideas, how to find a good mechanic, and even an article on this whole idea of dust is there at christiancarguy.com. But also, we want to tell you the Jesus Labor Love, car repair labor for single moms, widows, families in crisis. You know, those resources, opportunities to donate, see car repair centers that are involved in helping that. It's all at christiancarguy.com. And speaking of odor ideas, we have Linda is in Indian Trail, North Carolina. Linda, have you got the odor elimination solution for us? Well, I found one for myself. I actually had a brand new car and spilled coffee with whole or real milk in it. Oh. And it was so disgusting. It was so <laughs> sour. Anyway, I tried um, all the cleaning solutions I could think of, including vinegar and water. Did what you do I the one where, they, where they're, you're supposed to float a towel in a big bowl of vinegar? In the front and back seats overnight? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> very, very popular on the internet. I'm not the towel's well, supposed to float or you're yeah, supposed well, to float? Yeah, well, you know, I don't know if the towel, but you put the towel in the bowl of vinegar and you let it stay there in the back seat, the front seat, and you overnight something magical happens. I don't know, but uh, so I'm told. But what, what, what happened with you, Linda? It was uh, quite a while ago, a good 12 years anyway. I wound up... Um, getting my shop back out, making a solution of uh, baking soda and water and just soaking the mat in the back and in the front. Like it, it happened so a little bit on the front seat and on the mat in the back. I just, I don't even remember how it happened, but it was disgusting. And um, I soaked it and just let it sit for a little while, got the shop back out, and I vacuumed up all the excess water and it never smelled sour again. I mean, it's not very complicated, but it worked. So just That's the baking, best suggestion. Uh, baking soda and baking water. Soda, oh, water. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Well, thank you, Linda. God bless you. I appreciate you calling in today. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, there we have a vote for baking soda. Well, I, I took dry baking soda, and I, I put it all over, and I let it sit overnight, and then I vac took it to the, the coin car wash and vacuumed it all out that helped a lot i mean it, it was a good step in the right direction so you have a solution that we've never heard of before and we like the colorful ones <laughs> one one place i saw on the internet you know there's such wisdom out there that you're supposed to take a spray bottle of vodka <laughs> <laughs> 
So you don't <laughs> care what it smells like anymore. Is well, that the idea? I'm just thinking that's... One you know, spray you don't want to get stopped by a police car. car after you to, to use that particular <laughs> solution. Um, or, you know, you probably won't even drive for two or three weeks after. But, you know, I don't know if you're desperate. 866-348-7884 is the number to call in and share your idea. 866-34-TRUTH. We got Debbie is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Debbie, you're on the Christian Car Guy Show. Good morning. What you got for us? Good morning. Well, my wonderful husband bought me a used, 2006 um, Beetle Bug car, and I love it. And um, the only thing, it's, of course, it was used when we bought it, and it's in very good shape, but it reeks of cigarette smell. And I have tried all kinds of things, and it's a little bad, but it, whenever some time goes by, that smell just keeps creeping back out, and I just don't know what to do. So... Now, on the Internet, there's such ideas like coffee, a loaf of bread. You lay the bread all over the seeds. The vinegar and water idea, of course, you got that. And then there's the baking soda, which is very, very common. But what we did in the old days, you know. The, you, you, the, you're getting it. You're going to give it away in the beginning I, of the I'm going to just give away because Debbie, you know, she's trying to get her car fixed. You know, this is the way we actually did it. Was, okay was, well, I guess I can't because we're coming up on a break. <laughs> but Debbie's going to hang on. Kim's going to hang on. We got so much coming up from the widow's mite. We're going to find out more about that. And you're going to find out what did we used to do to get those smells out of used cars when we were back in the car business all those years. The clothespin uh, on the buyer's <laughs> nose. Oh, there's Japanese versions that are blow your mind at ChristianCarGuy.com. 866-348-7884. Call us with your idea. Oh, what are you going to do with that odor in your car? Odor elimination ideas today on the Christian Car Guy Show. We would love to hear your foolproof idea. <laughs> and well, in the case, let's not take it that far. <laughs> Just a good idea that works. It doesn't have to be foolproof. 866 348 7884. 866 34 Truth. We decided uh, during the break that the vodka idea was a. Uh, was a hundred proof. <laughs> you know, if you like the smell of that particular brand of vodka, it might have some. Well, we, we think you don't care about the smell after you've been in the car after a while for that. I don't know. I, I just, but sort of like the coffee idea. The the coffee idea works as long as you don't pick a brand that doesn't smell. Oh, well, we got the we, Christmas. We the Christmas have. brand was not a good idea for me. We still have Debbie <laughs> with us in Winston Salem, and she had very, you know, she's got the real situation here where somebody smoked in the car. And what do you do? Especially if they're a heavy smoker, you got all sorts of issues because not only do you have it in the seats and in the headliner, but you also got it in all the vents all the way through the car. And so, um, many cars today, and certainly Volkswagens, have what they call a cabin air filter. So that's like an absolute must. You got to replace the cabin air filter. Might find out if your car's got a cabin air filter and that you got to replace. It's just what you got to do. But the other thing that we are going to do if we're going to recondition a used car and it has cigarette smoke in it, we would actually take out the seats, which it's a little bit of trouble, but it's not as much as you might think. We would take out the seats and we would pressure wash them. Now, like about a year ago, my or two years ago, my wife's van seat broke, and I had to go get a seat from 109 You Pull It for her van. And when I got this seat, Debbie, you wouldn't believe it, it was covered in dog hair, <laughs> and it smelled like it had sat out in a wrecking yard with wet dog hair on it for the better part of three years. And so, Did the dog well, smoke? Well, how about if the seats are leather? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. That's, a, that's, that's another situation. But to, to finish the dog seat, I just simply took it down to the quarter car wash and literally blasted it with that pressure washer with the soap. You know, I didn't wax it. <laughs> I just I just washed it with the soap and then rinsed it out with the water. And then I let it sit out all weekend, a pretty weekend like this one, where it dried out. And believe it or not, that seat lost. It, was, it looked better than the other seats in the car. I mean, I don't oh, know man. how it, 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 and it never smelled, and it was absolutely wonderful. But a pressure washing a seat is definitely a way to get rid of the smell. But when you got leather, a good leather cleaner will take it off the leather, but you got it in the headliner, and so you can't take the headliner off and, and wash it. But they That but they, was my question, as I sniffed the headliner, and I can smell it there. 
Right. And they, they, if you go to Advanced Auto Parts or any of the auto parts store, Meguiar's makes a real good odor elimination product that you can wipe the headliner off with. But oh. also a little trick of the trade is that there's a, a part in that car that's called a cowl. It's right in front of the windshield, and there's usually some wire mesh over the top of it. And that's okay. where the air comes into your car. So when you turn on your car and, and, and put it on, you know, air conditioning, don't put it on recirculate because it's going to, you need to have outside right. air coming in. Well, if you'll spray that Meguiar's, you know, odor elimination smell into the cowl itself, it's uh-huh. going to suck that air all the, it's going to suck that product all the way through the system and oh, get it in there as evenly as you can possibly get it. And again, you, you use that stuff on the headliner, pressure wash your, your floor mats, well, ideally, and, you take the old air vent out first, and you do that, and then you put the new. Oh, you're air talking filter about the. In. You're talking about the, the interior. Uh, you're talking about your cabin air filter. Yes. Right. Well, I think my husband did that when we bought it, and it was pretty dirty, so that's taken care of. All right. Well, we're making progress. <laughs> yes, and he had an idea, and I'll throw it out there. Maybe some of your listeners can respond. He thought if we clean the seats with wool, like now, I don't know if he got that off the internet. Just because to, they're leather, you know, we were going to. Yeah, I would be careful because them. you don't want to hurt those seats. I would. I don't know about woolite, but I do know that they make wonderful leather cleaners that smell pretty good. Um, oh. Well, did you okay, say they were leather right. leather seats? Yeah, they're leather yes, seats, sir. and so yeah, you want to use a good weather a because you don't want with leather seats. Oh, they're nice, man. My daughter's Volkswagen has <laughs> leather seats. So, God bless you, I Debbie. Love my little bug. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Well, getting back to Kim, our um, author of the Widow's Might, and you know, Kim, there's a lot of resources out there that. I'm, I bet you became aware of that you didn't know, or maybe why don't I just take a minute and share your story a little bit, how, how you ended up in the situation of writing a book like this. You know, it's a really interesting situation, Robbie, and uh, I always like to think about how God lines up your skill set to get you ready to do whatever is the next thing in your life. And um, I have a really good friend who is an author, and she was approached by her publisher to write a book about widowhood. They wanted a Christian book, and they couldn't find one. And she said, you know, I just don't think that I'm qualified to write a book because I'm not a widow, but I have a friend, and I think she could write this book for you. And it was me. And they called me, and I said, hey, you guys know I'm not a writer, right? And they were like, yeah, we do, but we think you can do it. And they had me write a table of contents, and they had me flesh that out to be an outline and then all of a sudden I had a book contract and I was writing a book. <laughs> but in order to write Funny that kind how- of book you had to have the experience and and would you share with our listeners a little bit about what happened in your life? Things happened really suddenly for you. You know, I will. Um my husband and I um I worked for him for about twenty years. He was in the financial services industry and as things happen he was downsized out of his job and over a period of a couple of months we decided to buy a franchise and he went to the bank on a friday on a monday morning to open a checking account and um i got a call about 10 minutes after he left our house and said that he had had some kind of a seizure and what had actually happened is dale had had an aneurysm in his aorta and that is not a good thing and uh, the short version is they took him to the hospital, and he did live long enough to have surgery, but he did not recover from that surgery. And so in the course of a day, he died. And your world changed in all sorts of things that you never thought about, right? You know, it, re- it really does change. Um, you can imagine some of the things that might change, like maybe your finances would change, or maybe your house was too big, or you would need help with your children. But... Um, kind of really your whole concept of who you think you are changes too. All right. Well, we're going to get you some resources listening today from Kim. She's going to have those coming up. We got more odor elimination ideas coming from Bill and who knows from you at 866-348-7884. We still got to figure out how do you find a good mechanic? And of course, we're going to find out about all this dust and the dirt devil and all that stuff that's coming up again. So you want to stay tuned. we got so much more Christian Car Guy Show coming at you. Odor elimination.
Elimination Ideas today on the Christian Car Guy Show. Plus, how do you find a good mechanic? And we are so blessed to have Kim Knight with us here. She is the author of The Widow's Might. And um, Resources for Widows is one of the things that we uh, feel called to do here at the Christian Car Guy Show. As we have you know, discovered so many folks don't have answers when all of a sudden they're put in a position they never had to think about before. You know, like how do you turn on the air conditioning system or how do you do, you know, different things? How do you get your oil changed? Well, where, where are all your, fu- oh, I'm sorry. Where are you at? What were you saying? Well, I, with the widows, you, you got to know where all your finances are and your accounts and all your. Even your passwords, right, Kim? Absolutely. And, you know, I was just thinking about that during the break. Um, a lot of women handle a lot of stuff at home, but sometimes they don't know everything that's going on with their finances, how to find a good mechanic, how to get the odor out of your car. You know, it's just stuff that you haven't had to do in the past. And so I think it's really important for you to take stock of what you know, you know, what, it, what are you in control of, what do you do, do you know what you're doing, and then you have to figure out what you don't know and, and seek out help for that. And there are a lot of resources out there, not only for widows, but just for women in general, for, for guys that haven't had to that's the thing that runs that men run into. They haven't done a lot of stuff at the house. And so, you know, maybe they don't even know how to go to the grocery store. So it's just kind of figuring out what you know and, and then finding answers for what you don't. Yeah, because my father lost his wife in January. And, um, you know, immediately it, it all sorts of things that he has been working through. I don't think he's done yet, and it's it's September with some of the stuff with life insurance, right, Bill, and, and things that, that you got to follow through on that you never really thought that, that you're going to be involved with. Well, there are a lot of people that don't know where all the accounts are, you know, different retirement accounts and life insurance policies and bank accounts, and you, there, there are lots of spouses that don't have any idea where all that information is. And before all this happens, it's a good thing to sit down and sort of have all that mapped out. And the whole idea about the password, which is actually the second, the, the second chapter of your book, Kim, you know, what about your passwords? <laughs> have you shared those you know, with your spouse on both sides, whether you're husband or wife? You know, you, you, you have those situations to get in, right? Exactly. And I think people are reluctant to do that. I worked for my husband for 20 years. I knew on a daily basis who he was meeting with for his job and actually what he was even saying to those people. But, you know, you never think you're going to need to know what his password is to get into his bank account or his email or his phone. And, you know, you it's things that you don't talk about. And you think, well, that's kind of private. He doesn't really need to know that for me. But honestly, you really need to put that information somewhere and have that discussion. And if you have bank accounts or life insurance policies, where is all of that stuff? Um, it's just something you don't think that you're going to have to talk about until you're 90 years old. And, you know, things happen when you least expect it. And those accounts need to be looked at. If they're set up one way, the accounts are frozen and the surviving spouse can't get the money for a certain period of time, where if they're set up a different way, they can at least get to half of it. That is absolutely true. And if you're not an owner on the account, um, sometimes it's really difficult to get the information. And my husband was in the financial industry, and all of his accounts were set up different. And so, you know, I, I, when I make it to heaven, I'm hoping to have that discussion. <laughs> you know, why, why, why was this one this way and this one was different? And I have a really good friend that was in the financial industry, and she literally walked me through it. You know, call on this one, call on that one. And it's, it's just a little bit different, and it's something that you don't think you need to know, but you really do. And the passwords are really important, really important. Write them down, put them in an envelope, seal it, and so they know where it is someday when and they need it. Remember, they change. I mean, a lot of those passwords are only good for three months or some of them for Absolutely. one month. Well, one of the other things that we wanted to get to today on the Christian Car Guys show is how do you find a good mechanic, which kind of goes along in these lines is that, you know, something you maybe never had considered before. <clears throat> and it's really one of the most asked questions that I get that, you know, people send me emails or they call me or whatever or they know you're the christian car guy they'll walk up to you and say well how do i find a good mechanic a very very common question and i've, I've written an article on it of course it's at christiancarguy.com as well as the jesus labor love as well as the widow's might if you want to order kim's book uh it's right there with a the link to amazon where you can go order it but in finding a good mechanic you know the first thing i mentioned and 
it's always the first thing on all my lists, if you look at the things I list, is prayer. You know, God is really interested in every detail about your situation. And so you know, to pray is to bring him into the equation and to be able to, you know, have his guidance. Because apart from him, what can you do, Bill? Nothing. You make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> well, he was clear in John 15, apart from me, you can do nothing. So, you know, prayer is, is right there on the list. But that's something you may not have thought about, which is actually somebody shared this with me years ago. It's genius. Is you, you probably belong to a lot of Christians, belong to a big, large Sunday school class. Well, if you share the prayer request in this Sunday school class with 60 people in it or 40 people, there's a, not only are you going to put it on the hearts of these other people to pray for you, but that likely somebody in the Sunday school class will say, hey, how about, you know, what kind of car do you have? What about Bill and that kind of thing? So there's, that's another kind you of prayer. That, ask the, that's not your brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so then, number two, you know, like, my daughter's a nurse. My mother was a nurse. And if you ever want to find out who the best doctors are, you ask a nurse because, you know, they, they're around these doctors all the time and they know and they see. Well, in, in the car business, there's something similar to that. It's called a parts person. Every dealership has a parts department and all around town you have parts departments. Well, parts people know the good mechanics like nurses know the good doctors because the bad mechanics constantly return parts because they were guessing at what they were fixing. And so you don't have to be a parts person very long. And well, I was one at one you point. To the dealership's <laughs> mechanic. Well, and the dealership mechanic may be the best one for your particular situation because they have the most training. And, you know, depending on the situation, sometimes a dealership mechanic is the best mechanic. But nonetheless, at your local parts store, you find out the guy who waits on the mechanics and he will tell you for your car which guy – he sees that's that's doing really well or if you're in the dealership and you're trying to find out like wow i've got this real situation go to the parts department in the dealership ask a parts guy that's been there a while and i will bet the farm that he will tell you exactly who the best mechanic is in the shop and who you need to go to your service advisor and say i want this guy to work in my car because you know there's certain people that just have certain skills and in, in and and that stuff is made aware of through those people so there's a couple ideas Along those lines, but we are still waiting for your idea about this odor elimination. And, of course, you can find out about it at ChristianCarGuy.com, 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. And I want to share another idea that we have at ChristianCarGuy.com is I noticed on Amazon that this stuff called Moso, which is essentially charcoal in a bag, it costs nine ninety five. it sells at Amazon, it had like 2,000, 1,988 reviews on it, and they were almost all positive. When you looked at all the other stuff that was supposed to eliminate odors at Amazon, <laughs> you could see that it wasn't doing too good. But this particular product is is obviously got a lot of people. I haven't used it myself, but it's there at christiancarguy.com, and it might be a good thing just to put in your closet or wherever because everything I read about it, the people raved that this stuff really surprised them, um, and only nine ninety five, you know, plus shipping or whatever. <laughs> so... I'm not saying I recommend it because I've never used it, but I will tell you that obviously there's a whole lot of people that, that, that think it's good and charcoal obviously will absorb orders. I, I just did it all the old fashioned way. That's, you know, that's kind of how we did things. Well, not all of us can drive down to take our seats out of the entire car to hose it off <laughs> and then get it back home to dry out over the you week. You don't hose it, Bill. You, you take a pressure. <laughs> 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 oh me but yeah that's 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 the thing but kim getting back to again kim knight she wrote the book with widow's might which i i love the title but i i'm curious um I, I i get the play on words between the widow's might meaning the coin that the lady was gonna leave but what what were you thinking with the widow's might when you wrote the title you know, actually, I cannot take full credit for the title because when Broad Street, my publisher, came to me, they came with the title. And so they, it was their play on words. And I said, you know, you guys spelled it wrong. <laughs> they're <was> like, no, <laughs> that's we want it to be mighty. And so that's where they came with it. But it, it uh, clearly has a play on words for the biblical reference as well. And it was cute. Yesterday I posted that I was going to be on your show and a lady uh, commented that she was would watch because she would listen because this was her favorite story in the Bible, <laughs> so she got it. It was good. The widow's might, yeah. 
Well, I want to find out. I, I hope your husband left you with life insurance. Yes, sir. He and did I, leave me with life insurance. Can you share with the audience what a difference that made? Because in this day and time, there are an awful lot of people running around with just what little they have through their employer. And it's getting harder and harder and harder to encourage 30-year-olds oh, to... Break. She, we, we caught you right in mid, mid. We'll keep Kim on for the last time just to hear that question. And then we're right. going to find out all about the dust because we haven't found out about the dust and the dirt devil. We've got to get into all that. So, Kim, can you stay with us one more segment? Absolutely. I'd be pleased to. Thank you. All right. And we need your call, 866-34-TRUTH. Kinds of sounds going on there, but... <laughs> Welcome back to the Christian Car Guy Radio Show. I'm your host, Robbie Dillmore. Today, we're joined by Bill Mixon, our Christian insurance guy with Nationwide, and Kim Knight, who is the author of The Widow's Might. And you can find out all about these folks, as well as our Jesus Labor Love, Car Repair Labor for Single Moms, Widows, and all at ChristianCarGuy.com. And articles about how to get rid of smells and, and how to find a good mechanic and all that. Um, but when right before we went to the break, uh, Bill had asked him about her life insurance, her husband, if he had gotten life insurance and what a difference that made in her life. And before you got a chance to answer, we went to the break. So, Kim, go ahead and share with us about your husband's life insurance. Question. And uh, one thing I'd really like to encourage people, I think when you're young, you think, oh, I don't need that because I'm not going to die for 50 years. And hopefully you won't. But honestly, when you're young is when you really do need to consider the life insurance option because, A, it's way cheaper when you're young, and, B, you have a lot of life left to live and expenses to come, like kids through school and kids through college. So I really do encourage people to consider a life insurance option if you haven't already looked at it. I think people would find it much, much cheaper than they expect it to be. And um, it was very, it was life changing for me. I'm uh, 60, and I didn't have to go uh, back to work after my husband died because of his life insurance situation. Well, yeah. those folks in the Winston area, I would love to hear from you and answer some questions. Yes, well, it's it's a critical thing. And again, when you're young, it, you, she's exactly right. It, you know, if, and fortunately, I had a good life insurance agent when I was in my 20s. And I, you know, was married and whatever. And he sent, he sold me quite a bit that when I ended up with cancer, when I was in my forties, oh my word, people are like, you have all this life insurance. And they're, you know, they were shocked. And I was like, well, I had a really good life insurance agent who explained it to me when it was inexpensive to buy. So that stuff is important. But speaking of fire insurance, (laughs) you know, we were talking about this situation that happened in Genesis three. And our praise will buy the real black book. That's where we search the Bible for a hidden treasure, cry out for discernment, lift up our voice for understanding. And since we've got Kim here, she can consider these things with me. And Bill is always good to consider things. But the more I've thought about the curses in Genesis, the more I wonder about if they aren't some keys there, if there's some understanding that's down in the dust somewhere. So, Going back to, is there a connection between the motive and the curse? So when we see Satan's motive, I believe, was to exalt himself above God, what was his curse? He ended up being lower than anybody with down in the belly, right, eating dust. So what about Eve then? And the more I looked at Eve's curse, the more I saw there that I really had not seen before. I just really started to think about it from a standpoint of what was was her motive to eat the fruit exactly? If you do that in connection to the curse and under the woman, he said, here's the curse. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be for their husband and he shall rule over thee. Now, when you look at these, there's two sorrows there. So it's almost like saying, man, this children thing is going to be hard, hard. (laughs) And, you're going to have this situation with your husband that that's going to be difficult as well. So the question you can't help but wonder when I looked at that, and I want you to wonder with me, Bill and and Kim and anybody else who wants to call in by all means is, was it possible that what Eve was thinking was that and, and the way that 
you know, it said the woman saw the tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eye, and the tree was desired to was to be desired to make one wise. Was she thinking, "Wow, I'm going to need to raise a family, and I'm going to need some wisdom to make that easier, so I don't necessarily have to lean on God or lean on my husband." Well, look at the curse. Now it's going to be really, really hard to raise your family, and it's going to be really, really difficult because your husband is going to want to rule over you. I don't know. Think about that. But the one that really, when I started to look at this, that got my attention because I'm a man, moving on to Adam, I had a radical change of how I pictured this. I'd always thought that Adam was sort of in a tight spot, that he didn't want to lose his wife. And so he made a quick, horrible choice. Well, if I examine this in light of the curse, I now believe it was a great deal more selfish. My picture of this in mine now plays out like this. This is how Robbie is thinking. Was Adam's motive that even eating the forbidden fruit just would gain wisdom beyond his own? That his job was to subdue the earth and that he was supposed to, you know, have what it takes to make it all happen for his family. And if Eve ate the fruit, Think about it. He's standing there and thinking, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. She's going to be more capable of doing this stuff than me. I need to get up on her level because she's going to have more wisdom than me. He jumped into it. Similarly, in my opinion, for selfish reasons, apart from God and apart from his wife. And so, interestingly, the curse now is, you wanted to do this so that you would show the world you have what it takes. Well, now, when you go to show the world you have what it takes as a man who doesn't ask for directions or anything else, it's going to be hard, <laughs> hard. It's going to be toil. This is going to be really, really difficult to do. Again, the point that it gets back to, Bill, in my mind, is in both cases, Adam, Eve, and Satan, apart from God, you can do nothing. So you want to raise a a family without God, this is going to get hard, hard. You're going to go want to go do life without God. It's going to be hard, 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 some toil, sweat of your brow. The cool thing is when Jesus came, he gave us the antidote, regardless if I'm right on the motive or not. Apart from me, you can do nothing, which means it abiding me, which is what John 15 is about is that I will bring Christ into my life on a situation like, right, Kim, what, you know, before I face widowhood or, you know, being a widower, um, before I face other issues, if I'm used to abiding in Christ, it it makes a real change in your life. Because, Kim, if we share a little bit of your story, when this happened, you had Christ in your life, and it made a big, big difference. Oh, it really did, Robbie. Um, and I, this is kind of an interesting story that you've picked up on. Uh, in my Bible studies, we always kind of chuckle that it only took three chapters into the Bible before uh, human nature took over. And, you know, I guess we'll never know what Eve's motivation was there. But I, my favorite part of that story is when Adam kind of throws both Eve and God under the bus um, and doesn't want to take responsibility for right. his actions <laughs> in that story either. But yeah, it's. I think I feel great compassion for people that go through any loss or any struggle in their life without Jesus. It was. It just made my life immeasurably easier. I had a huge support group. My church was very involved in supporting me after my husband died, and I, I never felt like I was alone in that situation. So yeah, the faith, the faith walk for me was a very important part of my journey. Yeah, and and. In all these things that we do, if we abide in Christ, <laughs> it doesn't have to be hard, hard. It doesn't it have, does to be, not have to be hard, hard. It does and you know what? The other message is, Robbie, that it's not too late to find that faith walk. I yeah. think people, you know, sometimes you become a widow late in life and you haven't really had that faith walk, but it really is not too late to go down that road and, and to find and Jesus really uh, begin to, to help see. you in your journey. Absolutely. Well, we've got a Move on. We're so grateful for all of you listening to the Christian Car Guide sh- show today. We will r- remind you one more time, ChristianCarGuy.com, where you can get the book, The Widow's Might, and go on Amazon and be sure and give her a good rating afterwards. That means so much to authors if you go back and give them all those stars and stuff and tell them I want you to enjoy the book. 
Remember, slow down. Jesus walked everywhere he went. And this week, how about spending some time? Remember, apart from me, you can do what, Bill? Nothing. Nothing. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Christian Car Guy Show.